Good afternoon, this is Dr. Bill Christenberry at Caldwell Mill Animal Clinic and today we're going to start a series, we're going to be talking about allergies and this will be part one in a three-part series that we're going to be uh, talking about that. And why are we talking about allergies? Well, allergies are the number two reason why pets are presented here at our clinic anyway and probably in most other clinics as well. The, the first reason is because of uh, stomach and gastrointestinal upsets but allergies are number two. See a lot of, of uh, dogs and cats with allergies. Um, today I'll focus mostly ab about dog allergies but we'll talk about cats as well. Um, but the most common type of allergy is flea allergy. Uh, sounds simple but it is the most common type and it's fairly easy to recognize. When you see a, a dog come in with flea allergy, usually they're itching uh, and have some hair loss and some problems in the skin at the base of the tail. Uh, that's the most common place to see that. And so it uh, makes it relatively easy to diagnose a flea allergy if you see that. Now, that's not always what's causing the allergies. If you see uh, hair loss and itching and pustules and skin lesions at the tail base, but usually it is flea allergy. And it's interesting because the reason that dogs uh, and cats are reacting to fleas is because the saliva of the flea. It's when the dog or the cat is bitten by the flea, then the saliva gets into their uh, system, into their bloodstream, and then their uh, immune system has a hyper reaction, it's an overreaction, that's basically what allergies are, uh, from the immune system to the saliva of the flea. And so uh, it doesn't matter if the flea bites the dog or the cat on the tip of the nose, they're going to have the reaction at that same area, usually, over the base of the tail. Um, so it's not that fleas congregate at the base of the tail, but that's where a dog or a cat tends to have a response. Uh, to an allergy. Now when cats have flea allergy they also they have that at the base of the tail but one of the things we also see with cats is uh, they have a, a, on their uh, neck and their chin and around their um, ears uh, their whole around their head and their neck gets little uh, tiny scabs and, and pustules and hair loss in addition to seeing it at the base of the tail like you would a dog. So um, treatment obviously uh, flea control. Uh, if you had an allergy to shrimp and you kept eating shrimp, you were going to continue to have an allergy. Uh, so obviously the solution to flea allergies is to control the fleas. Well that's obviously again uh, easier said than done because in Alabama fleas are rampant. But there are some great medications out now that uh, we can use there are some topicals that we've been using for years uh, that work real well, but the good thing now is we have some oral medications uh, so you don't have to put the topical medication on the dog and the mess and whatnot. Um, and those work very well and they're usually monthly. Uh, we have one that actually works for three months uh, for fleas and ticks as well. Um, so uh, that uh, helps to control the fleas. Now the fleas have a life cycle and if you're seeing fleas and then you start the medication then it's going to take some time for the fleas to work through that life cycle so it's not going to immediately take care of the problem because um, you'll kill the adult fleas that are on the dog or the cat with the medication that you're giving but then there are larvae in the environment and there are eggs in the environment and those have to hatch out and they're going to get on the dog or the cat and then they have to bite the dog or the cat before they'll die. So that can take a few weeks for that to occur. So don't expect immediate results if you just start treating your dog or cat for fleas. Uh, which leads me to year-round treatment is recommended, especially here in Alabama, because we have warm days all through the year, and that's when the fleas begin hatching out. That's when they breed. And so uh, we recommend that they stay on flea treatment all year round to keep fleas controlled. Because if you stop it in the fall and then we have warm days in the winter, which we always will, and then the fleas begin hatching out, then you're not gonna have any protection and then you're gonna be fighting an uphill battle in the spring when they really get going. So um, flea allergy, base of the tail, 
on dogs, base of the tail and around the neck for cats. Uh, flea control is your main treatment. Um, we can uh, treat them for uh, the symptoms of the flea allergy, which is obviously mostly the itching. Uh, and we can, there are several uh, different products that we can use for that. But mostly a cortisone injection, a steroid injection is the best thing short term to control the itching while you're getting the fleas under control. Uh, and sometimes there are infections because the skin is damaged. And so, uh, if that's the case, then we'll put them on antibiotics as well to control that. Um, but um, that's basically our uh, information about uh, flea allergy, control the fleas, uh, treatment for temporary symptoms, and we should be able to keep them, keep, with the great products we have now, we should be able to keep our pets flea free. So we'll see you next time for part two.